Hi, everybody. It's Karen Hooley. Can you hear me? I hope everybody's having a great morning. Um, I just want to pop in first and um, tell you guys, um, thank you for following me for a crochet coffee and chat. Um, if you want to learn more about me, you can go to karenhooley.com. That's my website where everything there is to know about Karen Hooley Designs um, is there and available for you. So make sure you check that out. You can also follow me on Instagram at Karen Hooley. Um, if you follow me already on Instagram, you might notice that I've been a little quiet. This move to this new house has um, consumed me. Um, we spent the entire weekend moving into this new house, um, emptying boxes and stuff like that. So I'm a little behind on my social media. So I'm just letting you guys know. Also, you're watching me live on YouTube. And if you're following me, after the fact, um, after this video is over, YouTube will always hold have the replay here. But if you don't use YouTube, I am also on Rumble, and this is a link to join Rumble, and you can find Karen Hooley Designs on Rumble, and I will also have my videos there. Um, I wanted to put one last little note out there to everybody and let you know that my classes start next week with um, Tunisian Basics, it starts on Thursday. Um, so if you're interested in taking any of the three classes I'm offering this month, um, I still have room in all of them. So I have Tunisian Basics. It's a two-week class on Thursdays, um, the 18th and the 25th. Then on the 24th, I have uh, reversible, radical reversible shells, which is a shell uh, a scarf class. And then also on Thursday, the 25th, I will have in the afternoon, or what is my afternoon for me, it might be early evening for some of you, um, my um, short row scarf, which actually, my Tunisian short row scarf, which actually I brought, this needs to be blocked, guys. So, um, but this is a sample of the, the uh, Tunisian short row scarf. So you don't have to know the Tunisian stitches to join this class. Um, it's just we're going to talk about how to do short rows with the simple stitch. And if you don't know the simple stitch, I'm going to do a quick little mini lesson at the very beginning of class. So um, you can learn how to do that as well. Um, and if you want to learn the Tunisian stitches, I recommend taking the I did the, the scheduling on purpose so that the um, Tunisian basics class is the two week class starts next week and then on the 25th in the morning there is the second half and then in the afternoon you can take this so once you take the basics class you can easily convert to this this class so i wanted to show that to you guys while i was thinking about it um so i'm going to head over to the comments now oops wait a minute one sec here turn that off and see who's here um laura good morning it's good to see you here and linda and brat I'm so glad you guys are here. Um, oh, I bet you're having a lot of snow, Linda. Are you snowed in or are you able to get out? Um, we are supposed to have snow. Well, we're supposed to have it tomorrow, but today's schedule says no, but we'll see. I mean, it's been fluctuating, but we're supposed to, over the next seven, eight days, we're supposed to have like three or four days of snow with about three inches each day. So I don't know what it's going to be. Um, this will be our first probably heavier snowfall, if that's what they're saying is going to actually happen. So um, I don't know for sure, but... How are you guys? Um, it's freezing here, though. <laughs> I should mention that. It is. It was 19 earlier. I don't know what it is now. Let me see. Um, it is now 23. Okay, <laughs> so we're really cold. Um, but anyway, so here I am. Um, I wanted to see how you guys are doing before we get into projects and things like that. Um, anybody have any questions for me or want to... Um, start off the chat with something you want to talk about i'm not snowed in anymore but the frozen slush makes it try oh yeah i bet i bet um i'm glad you're not snowed in linda um i've only had that happen to us once that it was really bad um when we were living on the west side back in what is it was 2006 because it was the same year we took the kids to disney world for Thanksgiving, we came home to snow and then we had um, a, a week off, I think. And then it snowed for 
I don't want to say nine days. We couldn't go anywhere because it was snowing so bad and slick and we lived on a hill. And <laughs> finally, about the ninth day, my husband says, I'm going, I am going to get groceries. And I, and fortunately, the kids were old enough that I could say, I'm coming with you. <laughs> Just get me out of this house. So we left the kids at home and it took, a, I mean, our grocery store was only four minutes away and it probably took us 10, 15 to get there because the snow was so bad. And we lived on an S curve and it went downhill. And so just driving was horrible, but that's the only time I ever remember being snowed in for, for a good period of time. I, I bet you're terrified to go out to your mailbox. Ours is, our new one is down the street and we haven't quite gotten it um, set up yet because this is a new subdivision. And so the boxes are in, but they don't have the special locks on them yet that the post office uses. So um, I have to actually drive to the post office and get my construction hold mail. <laughs> it's how it works. Laura says, Husband, hubby and I are batting around the idea of opening a small yarn shop maybe this summer. Lots of concerns, but what are things you look for in a shop? Um, Laura, I'm going to be honest with you. The very first thing I look for in a shop is that it's crochet friendly. Um, the biggest problem here, I think this is exciting, first of all. So um, I want to say congratulations if you're thinking about doing this. Um, so um, make sure that crocheters and knitters are treated equally. Um, the new shop that I have here now that I've moved, they do. She is amazing. And I'm going to talk about her in a little bit. But um, and there's the, the old shop that I used to um, go to all the time at the, on the other side of Stilly River Yarns. We still work with a lot. Um, she's very, she treats crocheters and knitters on the same level. So that is the huge, huge thing. If you can get your crocheters in there, you got to remember that crocheters use one third to one half more yarn. So you're going to sell more yarn to crocheters than you will knitters. If you can get them to come into your shop and make them feel welcome. So um, that's that's the my number one thing is that um, they do that. Um, then also, I recommend or uh, the things I look for in a shop is that it's well lit, um, that we can touch the yarn and you know squeeze it. I mean that's really important, and that you carry a a, a good mix of yarns. <clears throat> you know, have some uh, what do you want to call it? Um, I say, you know, have some hand dyed yarns in there as well as the workhorses like, you know, Cascade Yarns or Barocco or Mal Malabrigo is a big one that I know a lot of people look for. Um, you know, all those staple brands, Knitting Fever is a huge, you know, all those uh, that are under the Knitting Fever umbrella, um, Ella Ray. Uh, let's see, who do I, I have a whole shelf here. This is, uh, this is right here is my box uh, or my bin for Knitting Fever. And so there's Ella Ray here, there's Snorro. There's Arcana, um, there's Queensland Collection, Jody Long. Um, I can't remember what this one is. I think this is Wasco too. Um, but there's Louisa Harding. Um, I'm trying to think who else is back there. Um, uh, LRA's a big one that I use. Wasco's uh, one I use. Um, Arcana, Wasco. Um, I love Ella Ray though, and the Queensland is awesome too. So you kind of want to balance that. And then you also want to balance um, your price points. So you want to have some higher end yarns because there are people who are going to want, you know, the nicer yarns. And then you want to have a price point that's a little bit lower for, especially for the, the crocheters who are new to yarn shops. Um, Cascade Pacific is, is a good one because it's, it's an acrylic wool blend. Um, a, an acrylic wool blend that um, you can use for children's clothing and blankets. I use that's pretty much my go to now um, for um, baby um, items. So, Laura, that would be awesome. Um, and then also, too, if you are doing, I plan to do classes, make sure you do both knit and crochet classes. And if you can afford it, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm seeing the new shops who actually do Zoom classes with teachers like myself or Melissa Leakman or Edie Ekman. Um, um, I'm trying to think, Casapinka. There's a lot of, of shops who will, you know, hire one of us to do a Zoom class for, you know, us, that's something special. Or I know um, one of the things Ann Budd does a lot is like a, a Zoom weekend 
where Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, she might, she might teach one or two classes each day. Um, that'll bring more people to you. So, Laura, you said you're in the Outer Banks um, in North Carolina. Okay, okay. That's, that would be a really cool place to um, definitely have um, a shop, I think. And I can tell you, I have a good... Um, I have a friend who lives in Florida who drives up and teaches, you know, like beginning classes and stuff like that too. So do you want somebody local? I mean, she's not really local to you, but she, she's a teacher and she also has a guild out there, a crochet guild who um, kind of travels to different shops. So if you're interested in that, you do open the shop, let me know and I can hook you up with, with her name is Karen also. So there you go. Um, let's see. There are no nice shops around here. The closest one is Downers Grove, Western Suburb. Because, oh, now you're in Southwest Chicago. Okay. So you are too far away. For, are you anywhere near, um, Linda, are you anywhere near the Chicago Crochet Guild? Um, there's a guild that meets, and I can't remember where they meet, but there is a guild in Chicago, and they might know some good shops for you um because i, I, I a couple of them are uh, past presidents of the crochet guild of america too and i can hook you up with them if you're interested so there you go <laughs> um but yes laura um a weekend worth of classes even if you do um you know a couple teachers where one teaches in the morning one teaches in the afternoon something like that for a weekend um, you, you know, it's a good way to um, get people to know your shop too, even from around the country. Because, like, when I am hired to teach for a class, a, a, a Zoom class for a shop, um, I always put it in my newsletter too. So that, in fact, I'm taking a class from a shop in Florida this Friday with Ann Bud. I'm it, it's a knitting class, but I'm taking a class of hers. I live in Washington. She's in Florida, or the shops in Florida because I want to learn and it's the only way I can learn from Ann Bud because nothing's live right now. So, um, so those are those, I hope that's helpful, Laura, for you. So if you have any questions though, let me know. And, um, and, and, you know, if I can do anything to help, especially since you're a crocheter, I'm assuming you're a crocheter because you're always here every week. Um, if there's anything I can do to help, you know, if you want to wholesale my books or if you would like me to do a class or anything like that, or just get the word out, just let me know. And I'd be, I'd be glad to, um, to do that. So especially for my, um, my followers, let's see. Hi, Sandy from Kentucky. It's good to see you. It's been a while since you've seen you on my lives. How are you doing? Um, I haven't been on social media much, so I haven't been, um, I haven't seen a lot of people lately. Um, yes, uh, Linda, that class is offered by Four Pulse. Yes, that's exactly who I'm taking that class, uh, the, the class through is, is Four Pearls. Deborah Eaton, what is the knit store close to you that are crochet friendly? Are you talking to me, um, Deborah? Um, uh, let's see. Um, the closest, because you're you're in Alaska, aren't you, Deborah? If I remember correctly, you're one of my Alaska people. Um, the closest one to me when I was on the west side was uh, Silly River Yarns in Stanwood, Washington. And the um, one that's here right now, I'm going to talk about them in just a second, but they're called Sheep's Clothing in Kennewick, Washington. And um, the, they both do online ordering as well as in-shop ordering. So um, in fact, um, when I run into this, I will, uh, when I run into talking about the shops, um, I will make sure I, I send you their information on here as well. Um, but uh, Sheep's Clothing is the only yarn shop in a 200 mile radius of this part of the state, with the exception of a yarn shop in Walla Walla, which is about an hour and a half away, hour, hour and a half away. And the Walla Walla shop is tailored towards um, the tourism people. It's not so much the local area, it's all the tourists. And they're only open special hours because the owner has her, her a regular job. And this is kind of like a part-time hobby. So um, the shop here closest to me 
Oh, I will tell you, Sandy, just a second. Um, the, the, this, I'm lucky that, um, I'm only like five to 10 minutes away from uh, sheep's clothing, but sheep's clothing, um, gets people from as far away as, um, Oregon, um, North central, uh, uh, Washington, they get Idaho people, they get, um, East or kind of central, central, we're kind of central Washington. We're a little more East of central Washington. But, um, but a 200 mile radius, including, you know, like Hermiston, Oregon and, and Pendleton, Oregon. Um, those are, that's her area. In fact, um, if any of you would live in the area or have ever heard of the slow crawl that's being done here in the Pacific Northwest, um, it was started by a couple of shops in Oregon. But the reason I found this out last week um, when I was in the shop um, the reason they actually started this is because my shop here, Sheep's Clothing, um, every year would take a group of her people over to Portland and they'd stay in Portland for a couple of days and do the Rose City Crawl, where all the Portland shops um, have it. And one of the shop owners who started the Slow Crawl said to her, well, Letitia, why? Why are you doing this? Um, because, and she told them, you know, there's no other shops. I can't do a crawl over in my area. So the Slow Crawl began and... Um, the slow crawl encompasses Oregon, Washington, and Idaho, I believe. Oregon, Washington, Idaho. I think those are the only states that are in it. And maybe Montana. No, I don't. I think it's just those three states. Um, and it starts Memorial Day weekend and ends Labor Day weekend. And this year, because of COVID, they're doing both a, an in-shop and or you can go virtually. And in order, you get just like most slow crawls, you get the free patterns, you get discounts on the featured yarns, that kind of thing. So um, if, if you're interested in that, I think it's slowcrawl.com and you can check that out as well. But so now, you know, our my local shop here in Kennewick can actually get people coming through because people as they're traveling will go, you know, if they're, if they're from Oregon and they're traveling through Washington, they can hit all the yarn shops that are involved in the slow crawl. If they go over to Idaho, you can do that as well. So yeah, so there you go. <laughs> um, let's see, Sandy, what is that bright orange yarn to my left? Um, this side. <laughs> oh, this one, is this the one, Sandy? Is this the one you're talking about? This is called Rush Hour and it's from Sock Obsession Yarns and it's her smooth sock base, which is 75 merino, superwash merino and 25% um, nylon. It's four ply sock, 100 grams, 462 yards. And again, the, co the, the um, colorway is Rush Hour. Um, if, last week I showed this too and it's, it's actually my next project. I'm gonna be winding it up. I just finished a super secret project that I can't show you. Um, so this one's going to be wound up and um, it'll be my next one. So I'll probably show you hopefully a little bit started next week um, here. So yeah, it's gorgeous. Isn't it, Sandy? I mean, that orange is not a color I normally pick, but I had to. It was just, it just spoke to me when I saw it. Um, let's see. Uh, Deborah, perfect information. Thank you. Want to order online. Awesome. Okay, cool. Cool, Deborah. Um, if there's anything else you're looking for, I mean, I know um, I try to talk about different things here on lives, but for all of you, not just Deborah, but everybody, if there's like you're looking for a shop to buy stuff from and you don't know where to go, email, you know, shoot me an email on my on my contact form on my website, and I'd be glad to show to talk to you or, or give you some information about that. Aunt Ida, hello from Alabama. Hi, Aunt Ida, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Um, did you just find me live or did, are you one of my followers or my newsletter subscriber or anything? Let me know. Um, ooh, like a motorcycle poke around. You know, there are people every year who do the slow crawl now, and this is the fourth year of the slow crawl, that do either get in a motor home or on motorcycles and they, travel the whole thing. I mean, now that last year and this year with COVID, they had to, um, they had to, um, uh, do the virtual as well. But the year before last, I was actually vending in Idaho and people, it was a brand new event it was the first year the event was happening. It was like a fiber festival and it was at an alpaca farm in, um, Idaho and people were coming through my booth who, 
were on the slow crawl and they were at a, lo a shop in, a little bit south of where I was, um, probably about 10, 15 minutes in Idaho, Moscow, Idaho. Um, and they were told, hey, there's this fiber festival. So they came through the fiber festival. So, and they were coming from all over um, the country for the slow crawl. So um, it's, it's really kind of cool. Let's see, Sandy, yes. I'd be watching, love that. Look, definitely watch because I mean, I won't show you the entire thing, but I'll show you bits and pieces as we go along because it's it's for a project for my next book. So um, I'll definitely show it to you. And perhaps my, I love that yarn. And that yarn is so bright. It's so great, so funny. And Deborah's looking forward to be with Crochet along. Yes, um, I should mention guys, if you would like to participate in the Bewitched Crochet Along, which starts next Monday, um, make sure you go to my website and under um, online or virtual classes and things like that, um, you can sign up for free. You have to register through my, my shopping cart, but it's free. And you will get a download that sh tells you how to get onto the Zoom call. It'll happen next week. And well, every, every Monday for four weeks, I'll have a Zoom call. And then I also have created a... Um, a, a kind of, they call it a mighty network is the name of the company that I'm working through, but it's like a little community center that has like place where you can chat, you can share your pictures and all that kind of stuff. So in between the zoom calls, you guys can chat. So definitely, um, definitely, um, sign up for that. And if you, if you still need the pattern and don't have the pattern, um, it is on my website under cowls and it's the bewitched cowl. <clears throat> um, the um, getting the pattern free with purchase of yarn is no longer available at this moment, but um, it uses um, mini skeins or you can even use a full size hank of yarn and just mix colors or, or you could do it all solid. So it's up to you what you want to do with that pattern. So definitely looking forward to that too. I'm so excited. I have people signing up for that. Aunt Ida says, I've been watching your lives later. First time catching me. Oh, hi, awesome. Well, welcome, Aunt Ida. I'm so glad you're here to watch me live. I know 9, 9 a.m. Pacific is, is a good time for me because it's first thing in the morning, and I know it's noon on the East Coast, um, depending where you're at. But it's not, I know it's not ideal for everyone. So, But I have to kind of work around my own schedule as well as try to get as mo many people as I can. So, um. So I'm so glad you're here. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I wanted to, um, since it seems like everybody has finished chat with this chat here for a second, um, and keep chattering because I'll come back to the comments. But um, I wanted to talk, I uh, follow up on something I talked about last week, um, and that's the um, the Queen of Hearts kit um, that I have from Lamb Shop Knits. Um, or lamb shop kits. I always keep saying lamb shop knits. Um, the Queen of Hearts kit. I showed it to you online on the screen last week, but um, this is the actual shawl. And the lamb shop kits has kitted it up using um, Madeline Tosh yarn, which I'm going to pull from back here. I haven't wound it yet. I was going to wind it, but this week we really did a lot of um, house stuff, so I didn't have time to wind that up. Um, but she has the kits. That's the link here down at the bottom. But I wanted to let you know, she just told me yesterday, she set up a 10% off coupon code. If you type in coupon code Hooli, which is my last name, um, you'll get 10% off the kit. So if you're interested in one of those kits, and admit, we're kind of holding off because Mad Tosh is a, a little bit more expensive yarn. I'm going to show that again. Um, you can... Um, get 10% off um, the kit now. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention with this um, yarn, the original yarn I used is Schmutzarella. Um, it's her mini skeins up until this bright, bright red. And that bright red is as a full skein of her, of her brightest red. Um, she just posted on Instagram earlier this week that she finally has her minis back in stock and she's been dying them as she can go. So um, I don't know, for those of you who don't know, there has been um, a lot of yarn companies have been having trouble getting their, uh, their base yarns in. A lot of the yarn dyers have been having a hard time getting their base yarns in. She was finally able to get her base that she uses for her minis. So if you're interested in doing 
it in her, the yarn that's recommended, which if you remember when I released this, I, I posted pictures of everybody's shawls that did this, um, that tested the pattern for me. Um, most of them used her colors. They're just in different colorways. Um, one did rainbow, one did purples, one did pinks. Um, I just happened to use the grays to the reds around the, with the black in there, a couple blacks in there. So just so you know, um, you can get the kit on Lamb Shop, um, Lamb Shop Kits, put that back up here, using the um, code Hooli to get 10% off. Or you can go to schmutzarellayarns.com and get the actual, the same yarn base that I used in this yarn. And if you want the exact colors, I believe she has those colors in too. So if you have the pattern, all the, the color information is there. But I wanted to let you guys know about that because um, she was really gracious about um, about making sure that um, there's a, you know, a little bit of a discount for even for my followers. So, and then the other thing too is um, she is, I don't know if she's put them up on our website yet, but she, um, she was looking at having a lower price point yarn in there as well. Jaeger um, yarns and they're more solids rather than the speckles like are in the, the kits that she's got up there now that are a little more expensive. So I don't know if she's done that, but you might want to look for those too as well. Um, if that's something you're interested in. So I wanted to let you guys know about that. And then I did mention, um, I was going to talk about my local yarn shop. Um, I'm going to pull up there. I'm going to show you guys their Facebook page here really quick because um, she, she has a website and you can go to her Facebook page, but this is sheep's clothing. This is my, my new local yarn shop. And um, you can go to her, her yarn shop, but I wanted to show you, I got to bring this over. She is now a official, um, she now officially carries some of my patterns and all of my books. She has all of my books in stock. Um, this particular pattern, this shawl is Seaside. She is the sample, this is the original. Um, she has created kits and I don't know what the pricing is. You'll have to go to her website, but um, she's created kits with the, the same base and, and this, she's featuring all the new spring colors that the dyers use, um, used for this. But the, the yarn is Bella Trista, which is also a local to this area yarn. Bella Trista and they do all natural yarns. Um, the, the yarn that I use, the base is milk fiber. So if you're allergic to wool, this is a great yarn to look at. Um, and she's got all the colors. So she's created kits and you can get the, the pattern in the kit. And then she's also doing a crochet along for crochet um, spring tops. And so, so if you're interested in my Serenity um, sweater, which is this guy right here. Let me see if I can get a bigger picture here for you guys. Um, so Serenity is right here, um, and this is Seaside the Shawl. Um, she's um, also got that pattern in stock and is doing some kits and stuff like that. So if you're interested, make sure you go and check out her website. Her website is um, anaughtyhabit.com. www.anaughtyhabit.com, which I think is a really cute um, uh, email or not email website address. So um, if you're interested in checking her out and seeing that I've got some stuff there too, and she's been doing some kits on one of my patterns or a couple of my patterns, um, check her out too. Um, her, her, uh, her Facebook page is kind of, is kind of fun because she, um, you know, anytime she gets new York yarn in, she'll post about it. Um, any new giveaways that she sees or she's doing a giveaway herself. Um, here's this, the crochet along was, this already started, but you can still participate. She recommends the Bella Tree stuff for this one as well. Um, what else does she have here? Um, she just got some rowing in. So you can see that she does a lot of different, you know, different things. So if you're looking for stuff, I mean, her this yarn shop is packed. I don't even know how, how to even tell you. I mean, it is packed with stuff. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you should definitely check her out again, sheep's clothing in Kennewick, Washington. There is another sheep's clothing out there from what I understand. I want to say it's in 
the Minnesota area or something like that. She was telling me that they get confused sometimes. Um, but this is Kennewick, Washington, and she's been around for 29 years. So she's a great little shop. Um, so those are the things I wanted to tell you about for sure. Um, I just noticed there's a couple comments here. Linda asks, do you know if Four Pearls offers quantity discounts? I was going to order two kits if I get a discount. Never got an answer. Honestly, I don't know. Um, most shops don't. It's usually places like Webs or um, Knit Picks or even Yarnspirations and all those um, that are primarily online that do. But, you know, if they didn't answer, chances are they probably don't offer discounts. Um, you could check their website and see because usually when they do quantity discounts, it's all um, listed on their website. So, um, but for little yarn shops, um, I mean, I know Four, Four Pearls in Florida is, is a larger yarn shop and they, they're, you know, they, they're doing really, really well. It doesn't necessarily mean they do quantity discounts. So um, I check with them again. Um, but I don't know. Um, Laura asks, what are your thoughts on Z twist yarns? I have noticed amazing stitch definition, really obvious when I don't pay attention to my stitches with them. Um, honestly, I'll be honest with you. I have not seen anything as far as stitch definition with my crochet. Um, I don't use a lot of Z twist yarns um, because I did try them out when they first started coming out through, I um, can't remember the name of the company that did the first ones. Um, and even hand, even with hand spinners who Z twist rather do, you know, um, they spin S and the twist Z. I don't notice a difference. Um, honestly, uh, if you're left-handed, it's going to cause you to twist or to split your yarn more. Um, everyone who I know that uses that's left-handed that uses a Z twist, if they find the yarn a little more splitty than the right hands. I mean, but the S twist is more splitty for those of us who are right-handed. Um, I I am not <laughs> I am not a crocheter who jumps on board of that conversation between S and Z because I've been crocheting so many years that even with splitty yarn, I know all the tricks that with my style of crochet, I'm a knife holder and how I, how fast I crochet and how much I pull my yarn here and there. Um, I don't, I don't jump on that because I don't see a difference, honestly. So, um, I mean, I, to me, Z twist yarns is more of a uh, clickbait, I guess, for people to buy yarn. Ooh, it's Z twisted kind of thing. I don't see a difference. It, 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 but that's just me. I mean, there's people and you might see more stitch definition. I don't. With me, what I see stitch definition is how tight the twist is. Um, and that's true whether it's S or Z yarn. Um, the tighter the twist in the yarn, the more stitch definition you're going to have in crochet. Um, I believe in knitting as well, but it, if it's a tight, tight twist, your stitches are going to pop. So, um, but I don't see a difference between S and Z at all. So Laura, I'm sorry if that's not the answer you were looking for, but um, for me, it's, it's a non-issue. Uh, it, to me, it's more of a clickbait thing rather than a, um, a, um, a, a real difference maker for me. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Um, okay. Now I went, I haven't shown you any projects because, um, I had to do a super secret project last week. Um, but, um, I was able to, I just show you this yarn is still, still in Hank form. Uh, okay. Okay. Cool. Laura. No, thank you for, yeah, it's, it's, it, that's my opinion. And I know a lot of crocheters will tell you something different, but for me, I mean, honestly, it's, there's no, there is no difference in, in either S or Z for me ever. <laughs> I've tried them all. So I've never seen a difference with S or Z. So, um, I showed you the sock kit from Nanette Wake Studio last week, and I'm going to put up her website here really quick. 
Um, this is her Valentine. I don't know if that she has any more of these in stock, but it was a full hank of this speckled and then a, a mini skein of the brown. And this is what I did for the Super Bowl. I, to be fair, I did a little bit of the foot last night. Um, but I am almost, well, I finished the gusset, the decreasing here, and I'm working on the foot, and then the toe will be this brown. So hopefully by next week, I'll have this, this sock finished and the second one started. Um, this is kind of my TV. Um, well, usually football, but now football's over. I do socks during football season because it's just easier. Um, I don't have to worry about my tension as much because... I'm already tight making socks, so if I get tighter, it's not a big deal. Um, but this is, the pattern is my grandmother's pattern. Um, it's just a vanilla sock pattern with a, just a, a, a vanilla, you know, this is all stockinette. This is just a two by two rib and, and a normal slip stitch heel. Um, but it's my grandmother's pattern. Um, it's a, a heel flap and gusset construction. Um, the same pattern that she used to use to make socks for the family when I was a little kid. Um, she died when I was nine, but um, my dad actually remembers her making these. Um, I, I know she made them in my size too, and I don't have any left, unfortunately, but of those. So, um, but I, when I found her pattern years ago, I learned to knit specifically to learn this, this sock. So um, this is, her pattern so if everybody asks but I really love how the the brown kind of pops in the in the speckles because of the heel and the um the cuff so I thought I'd show you that so that's the only project I have that I can show you um I do have a project around here somewhere that I need to finish that's a super secret and I need to get that out to who it needs to get out to but other than that um that's uh that's all I've been doing this week. <laughs> Socks, setting up a house, and um, and the super secret project. So, um, anybody else have questions for me? Um, I've got another. Oh, I, we've got a little, little more than um, twenty minutes left. So I'm glad to answer more questions. So, uh, any questions for me? Let's see, that's neat that you have your grandma's pattern. I'd love to get my hands on my grandma's pattern. See, um, my my grandma, my grandmother's, um, my grandma, my dad's mother. This is my, my, I have a grandma and I have a nonna. Okay, and they're both Italian, but that's how we differentiated. My grandma didn't want to be called nonna because she was lived in the United States, so she was grandma. My, uh, and she was born and raised in the United States. My nonna was born in the United States, lived in Italy until she got married to my grandfather. So she wanted to be nonna because that's what the Italians <laughs> call their, their grandmothers. Um, my grandma did not have a lot of patterns per se, like pattern books, things like that. She had her, her standard patterns and um, the pattern that I do for the sock, um, my dad or my aunt actually typed up the pattern and um, my grandmother died in 1976. And when my, my aunt, my Lala Marie, my dad's sister, who um, was cleaning up the house to move into a smaller place, she gave me, because I was the only one in the family, I, there's only two granddaughters on that side of the family. Um, my aunt never got married. And my dad has two daughters. So um, I'm the only one who does knitting, crocheting, all that stuff. I wasn't even knitting back then. But she gave me um, the uh, all of my grandmother's knitting and tatting, everything. Shuttles, yarns, whatever was left over. I have samples of my grandmother's tatting. Um, I have booties and slippers and all that but none of it was written down except one day gosh probably about 10 years ago I opened a box that had her tatting stuff so I wanted to see what was in all that tatting and there was a folded up couple pieces of paper of this sock pattern typed up and I, I my dad doesn't remember typing it up so he thinks that my aunt typed it up for my grandmother um there's it was handwritten and then there was the type version but it was written in vintage terminology that I literally at the time went on to Ravelry onto one of the main, uh, the, the main knitting groups where people just talk knitting and said, I have this pattern for my grandmother. I don't know what this means. Can you tell me what this means? And that's how I learned to knit these socks. And if you look at my very first crochet patterns for socks, 
Um, there's two of them out there, mix and match um, cuff down and mix and match toe up crochet socks. If you go to my website, I have both those patterns there. They are based off this knitting pattern. I construct them the same way she constructed these, only in crochet versus knitting. So um, her pattern, once I figured it out, actually led me to crochet socks. And that's why I have um, even my, my uh, I can't believe I'm crocheting socks book from Leisure Arts is based on her knit pattern. And those two sock patterns on my website are also based on her knit pattern. Um, so, and even my crochet rock socks book, <laughs> they're based off of her, loosely off of her knitting pattern. So um, that's how I, that's what I've got in patterns for her. Um, for my nonna, my mom's mom, um, who taught me to crochet, I have stitch dictionaries from Italy. I have patterns from Italy and not just crochet. I have, um, uh, what do they call it? It's, um, it's not hardanger. It's an embroidery that they do on linen. I, I cannot think of what it's called right now. Um, it, but the way you do your stitches, it creates holes in the fabric and literally the linen drops away and it's all hem stitched around the opening based on how tight you do the, the, uh, the needlework. So, I mean, I have all sorts of stuff from Italy from her. I could go for days on my nonna's stuff. So, um, I won't though. <laughs> you guys get bored, bored of that. Let's see. Linda says, my maternal gram didn't knit or crochet. I don't know if my other grandma knit or, or crocheted, but she can speak but a few words of English. And we saw her once every two, every year or two. Okay. Um, what nationality uh, was she? What language did she speak? My nonna didn't speak much English either. Well, she spoke broken English and enough to get herself understood. Um, she only spoke Italian, but um, I think the older I get and knowing all the things that she did, because I lost her in 92, um, and the more things that I think about, you know, she's go to the grocery store and she'd bring the ads with her and she'd make the cashier understand what she was looking for and stuff like that. I think she understood English more than she let on. Um, my grandma had a gingham colorwork knitted sweater that she made for each kid in the family. I'd love to find that pattern. Um, Aunt Ida, if you have a photo, I don't know if you're on Ravelry or not, but there's a place on Ravelry where you can, um, post a photo and say, Hey, I'm, this is my grandmother made this. Um, does anybody know where I can find this pattern? They might. Um, no, um, if you are anywhere near a yarn shop and you still have one of those sweaters, um, a yarn shop might be able to help you deconstruct, not literally deconstruct the sweater, but deconstruct how it's made and help you figure out how to make it yourself. That, that's, um, um, that would be my best guess. Um, and if you have a photo, um, even send it to me. It might be something that'll trigger a memory of a pattern. And I, I can, I can see if, um, I know of somebody who might have something similar even. So, um, if you have, if you want to go to my website and use my contact form, send me a photo and we can do that too. Um, Linda says, my grandmother spoke Sicilian, but my dad said he could barely understand her after my uncle was killed in World War II. He thinks she had a bit of a breakdown as she was always talking to his photo. Oh, did your, your dad must have understand, understood Sicilian though. Um, or it, it, Sicilian's really just a dialect of it, Italian. My dad speaks Genovese, which is a dialect of Italian, but we always tell him, that he doesn't speak English or Italian because he adds ing to everything. But that's what the Genovese do. The Genovese do. So, um, but if she had a breakdown, that might be a reason why he couldn't understand her. That's so sad. I'm so sorry. Um, oh yes, definitely look for a photo, Aunt Ida. Definitely, I, I'll do what I can if I can if I can find anything for you. Laura says, most Italians I know speak better English than they let on. Can't say I blame them. <laughs> I mean, my grandma, if, my nonna, if you could talk to her in person, she would, um, she would, you know, get her words, it, you know, in a, you know, like when, when I brought Dave, my husband, to meet her when we were dating, um, 
she called him Davy instead of David. And, you know, and she would know enough, you know, like cookie or coffee or stuff. Um, but her way of communicating with those who didn't speak Italian or understand it was with food. So my poor husband, we would go, Dave and I, when we first got married, we would have a date night and we would go out to, usually it was Mexican food because there was a really good Mexican food restaurant near where we lived when we first got married. And, um, and then we'd stop in to see my grandparents. And um, my Nona would answer the door and she'd be saying the rosary because uh, that, those days they had the rosary on the radio and it was usually on around dinner time or after dinner time. So she'd answer the door and she'd be saying a rosary, but she'd kiss me, she'd kiss Dave, and then she'd usher us into the kitchen, finish the rosary. And then literally, as soon as the rosary went off, the TV went on. It was usually like Gunsmoke or one of those Westerns, you know, um, can't think of the other one. And then um, she would literally get up, make coffee and bring out the cookies. And Dave would say he didn't want cookies. And she would just start shoving cookies on, on a napkin. And he was like, I can't insult her. So I got to eat them. So, yeah. So she was, that was her way of doing that. Um, that's okay. If it's not a great photo, it, as long as I can kind of see what it looks like and other people can kind of see what it looks like, it gives, it'll, it would give us an idea of where to even find something like that. So don't worry about that, Aunt, Aunt Ida. Um, Deborah Eaton, what is the knit sock pattern you start with, started with or use? Um, Deborah, um, this, this one here is the, is the pattern that I started with. It's my grandmother's sock pattern. I don't have one that I can share, but if you go to, um, if you're looking for knit, um, knit pattern, if you go to, um, the yarn harlot, which is Stephanie, Stephanie Pearl McPhee, she has a vanilla sock pattern. It's very similar. Um, and I would start there with that one. Um, if anybody's interested in learning to knit socks that is a knitter, um, let me know. And maybe I can do a, a, a zoom of teaching my grandmother's sock pattern. I could do a class, a little mini class on, on that sock pattern. So just let me know, Deborah, if that's something of interest. Um, Brat's mom. Dad spoke Sicilian dialect as a kid, but after he got out of the service and settled in Chicago, he spoke to the customers in various other dialects. Miss Sicilian and Tuscan. Well, if you, you talk to anybody who um, comes from Tuscany, which is my mom's family, they speak the true <laughs> Italian. And her, her dialect is pretty much the same as what I learned when I took Italian in high school and college. So um, if proper Italian is, is, pro is what they teach in Tuscany and Rome and all that area. So there you go. Count me in on socks with grandma socks. Okay, that would be, I'll, I'll write that down. Let me get my sticky notes out here and see what I can do about maybe doing a Zoom class on um, grandma socks. And maybe I can um, type up that pattern in a way that's more current. So that you're not hunting around the web going, what does this mean? Uh, like I did. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun class. It's a fun sock pattern. So definitely, definitely I will um, put that right here. Through. Thing to do that. I'm, um, I'm kind of, I'm reevaluating a bunch of stuff for how I'm going to do, um, oh, how I'm going to do classes going forward, um, just because things have changed around here a little bit. So um, these classes in February, um, I'm going to do some classes in March. I just haven't figured out what days are going to work for me yet. So bear with me as I do more classes. But if there's any classes you guys are interested in, and actually, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to go to my website. Um, can't spell today. I'm going to bring this. I'm going to share the screen. Oops. Wow. Okay. Why is my website not working? There it is. <laughs> And Henley Designs. There we go. I, if I could spell my own name correctly, then maybe I would uh, be able to do this better. Um, I'm going to share a page on my screen. Um, hang on here. This is my website. Oops. 
Um, I am, I have a page on my website that I, it's, it's mainly for shops and stuff, but I guess I don't have it linked here. Um, uh, okay. Let me, um, let me type this up then. If you go to karenholy.com slash class descriptions, I have a list of all of my usual classes I teach. Some of them have photos like beaded bling here. You see the photo and then the descriptions underneath and LinkedIn extended and it's got a description here. But if you look here, radical reversals, ripples, I don't have a photo because I need to redo the sample for that class. Um, um, crochet Lay Basics doesn't have one. My Savvy Single Crochet class is based on my Annie's book that's no longer in print. Um, things like that. You can see all the different classes I teach. There's classes here that interest you. Let me know. My next newsletter is going to have a link to this page of my website. Um, and, and on this page, um, I'm going to ask you guys to look at these and give me the top three classes you'd be interested in taking. Um, this is my my cuff down socks class, which is really a, a good way to learn how to do crochet socks. Um, my top down sweaters. I have to redo the materials for this class um, for for Zoom teaching because it's still going to be a little bit different. I mean, it's the same idea. It's just the, the instructions don't work for an online class. So I have to redo those instructions. But I do want to teach this um, top down sweaters live as well. So just so you know, there's, there's a, this page on my website. And if you're interested in that, um, did I not share? Oh, there we go. I'm so sorry, guys, that you couldn't see it. Oh, um, Aunt Ida, if you go to my website, um, go to my contact form, and you should be able to attach a photo there. If not, go to um, send me the photo to Karen at KarenHooley.com. But the best way is to use the contact form first, because that goes into a special box that I always access right away. So um, definitely look at that. I'm so sorry you guys didn't couldn't see my screen. Anyway, so it's KarenHooley.com class descriptions is the page is the page is up here at the top. And then you've got all my my uh, classes here that I that I actually have existing classes for. If there's something that you want to learn that's not here, like that sock class, that knit sock class, if you're interested in that, um, let me know and I can develop classes. I'm known as a technique teacher, so I can teach all sorts of different techniques. Um, but like here, I wanted to show you, I was talking about it. So like shawls on the side, here's a photo of the shawl and here's, or the, the class photo. And then here is the description. But then if you look right underneath it, it says socks, the toe up way, crochet way. Um, there's no photo. That's because I need to get new samples. Um, and then so, uh, there are certain classes that will have uh, prerequisites. So you have to take, in order to be able to take the toe up sock class, you have, I have to see that you have taken my cuff down sock class. Or you've been, can prove to me that you've been crocheting cuff down socks for a long time. So because there's so much that I skip in that class based on um, what we do. So um, that's the page if you're interested in taking classes from me, I, I'd love to get an, an idea of what you would like to see from me as far as classes are concerned. Let's see, Deborah says, that would be amazing to knit socks with you. Okay, we can do that, maybe, maybe March or April. I will set up um, a, um, you know, maybe I'll just do it uh, kind of more of on the off the cuff kind of class where um, we can maybe meet for three or four weeks for an hour and we can do a certain section of the sock and answer questions and stuff like that. So it won't be as expensive and time consuming and, and that kind of thing. So we can, we can do something like that. Okay. Anything else guys? Oh, Linda says, and Aunt Ida says, I love knitting socks. I, you know, knitting socks is kind of a, a guilty pleasure for me. I mean, I loved crochet socks. I love wearing crochet socks, but for there's thing about knitting socks that 
because especially since I'm using my grandmother's pattern, it's very monotonous and, you know, I can meditate while I'm doing it. So I can either pray for somebody if I'm making socks for somebody or I can watch TV and I don't have to worry as much except for maybe when I'm doing decreases and increases and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, socks are awesome. Let's see. Yes, proper Italian is Tuscan. When I took Italian classes, my dad had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> See, my mom minored in, in Italian in college, so she learned the absolute proper Italian. So um, that's the Italian I first spoke. Italian is actually my first language, even though I don't speak it very much anymore, and I've lost a lot of it. But yeah, so Italian. Us Italians, you know, got to stick together. Um, anything else, guys? We've got another about five minutes before I have to go. So um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, I need to tell you guys about this week. Oh, I know what I need definitely need to tell you is next week for sure. Um, I will not be going live at nine. Um, I will be going live at 10. Okay, then Aunt Ida, I'm gonna post in the comments um my email address. Um, and go ahead and send the photo to that email address. Sorry, guys, my, my allergies are kicking in. Um, definitely um, send it there and I can do that. Um, anyway, so what I was saying, next week it will be going live at 10 a.m. instead of 9 a.m. Um, it's Ash Wednesday. I need to go to church. Um, so I'll be at Mass at 8 a.m. Um, and I, I, this will be my first time doing Ash Wednesday Mass here on this side of the state. Um, it, but when I was in the other side of the state, it would take more than an hour to do because of all the people that would attend Mass. I don't know what it's like here on Ash Wednesday, especially now with COVID. Um, our Masses on Sundays aren't as full as I would expect expect them to be, especially at a parish the size of ours. But that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Um, because Ash Wednesday is one of those um, weeks that are one of those days that people who don't go to mass regularly come. So it makes mass go over. So instead of 9 a.m. next week, it's 10 a.m. Um, Pacific. So it'll be 1 p.m. Eastern, um, noon Central, 11 Mountain, and then at 10 a.m. Pacific. I have to I have to really think about that these days. Um, so there you go. Um, Brat's mom will be late next week. Okay. Okay. So, um, okay. So if you're not there, I won't worry about you, Linda. <laughs> um, because you're here religiously every week. So, um, but I just, I just want to let you know it'll be at 10 instead of 9. Um, but I will be coming live because hopefully by next week you'll get to see, like Sandy was asking for, this started, hopefully. And hopefully I have a couple other things I can show you as well. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start signing off. Um, for those of you who are watching this not live, make sure um, – to check out KarenHooley.com. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Karen Hooley, and I'm going to put that up here. Um, make sure that you don't have a space between Karen and Hooley on Instagram um, or uh, underscore. It's all one word. Um, if you are watching on Rumble or if you're interested in watching me on Rumble, um, there's a link that you can register on Rumble. And um, just look for Karen Hooley Designs and, enjoy, and subscribe to me there. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button here. And if you're watching this video on Rumble, make sure you hit the, the, um, the subscribe as well on, on Rumble. Um, again, there's Instagram. I am no longer on Facebook as far as a business is concerned. I have a personal page there, but that's only for family and close friends. So, um, and I actually haven't been using Facebook as much as I should lately, but that's okay. That's a whole other story. Um, and if you want to learn more about me, there's my website, karenhooley.com. Um, I hope you guys had a great time here, those of you who are live, and I hope that those of you watching later um, enjoyed what we talked about. It's really kind of fun to be able to have a lot of questions coming in and um, and learning about my followers. So please join me live if you can, and if not, watch me on the replay. And I hope you have a great week. I'll see you next week at 10.
10 a.m. Pacific, an hour later than normal. Um, but I will talk to you guys all later. Have a good week. Let's see. Laura says, have a great week, everyone. Thanks, everyone. It's good seeing you all.